This is the fifth conference, and Vita, if you can give me the key, please. This is the fifth conference. We received this key at the last conference to carry the messages forward, and it's been handed down from one conference to the next. We're hoping that somebody's going to pick up the key at the end of this conference or indicate interest to run the sixth conference, but Vita, who's organized this fantastic thing, has even transformed the way the key is done. So, you'll get a really fantastic key if you offer to do the next conference. <laughs> so, what is different this time? So, first of all, the location. This is the first time the conference is done in Asia. Uh, it's been done in Europe, North America, Africa was the last time, uh, Europe again, and now Asia for the first time. But what about the thematic difference? What we want to stress in this one is urgency and transformation and action. So CCAFS has been going as a program for 10 years, and you start reflecting on what you've achieved and what you haven't achieved. And we can point to th things we think are fantastic. Millions of farmers doing things differently as a result of climate advisories. Tens of billion of dollars of development funding changing because of science coming into it and advising and going in a different direction. But we think it's just the tip of the ice iceberg. If you look at any target in the food system, we're not on track. Almost any target you take, we're not on track. So if you look at food insecurity, we're doing quite well. It's going down. But if we are serious about the SDGs, it has to go down like this. So we're not on target for that. And that, how, how is climate change going to change that? It's going to be even more difficult to get food insecurity down. On the mitigation target, we're hoping for a one and a half degree world. We, we're going to overshoot one and a half degrees. Two degrees, it's highly likely we're going to overshoot two degrees. We are heading at the moment for three to four degree warmer world. So we're not on target for the mitigation targets. We're at about one degree warmer world at the moment, and there's extreme weather events throughout the world, the Met, Departments have done fantastic work in terms of understanding extreme events and the, the frequency and severity of extreme events is just rising. So you look at any of these targets and we're in trouble. So this is why we want to focus on, on urgency and transformation. We need to transform the food system and different ways in the north and in the south, in Asia, in Africa, different ways, very context-specific. But we also have to transform the way we do business as agencies and institutions. And as a very small part, we have to transform the way we do conferences. So this is a fantastic venue. There's places to sit outside. We challenge you to go outside and have conversations which change business as usual. We want to think outside the box. So I'm just going to quickly go through the six themes that we're um, going to focus on. So the first one is on the technologies. And past conferences have done lots on technologies. So I would say that while technology is crucial for the transformation agenda, there's other things that need to be put in place as well. And when we're doing transformation, we really have to think about scaling up and thinking about the blue sky technologies which are coming down the line which are going to transform our food systems. The next one. There's the development community has got this much money. We've estimated that if we get the private sector involved, we can bring in almost $400 billion of funding. The private sector has to be a crucial driver of change in the, for smallholders as well. 
And if we're serious about this, and I'm looking at the CGIR, we cannot have only two finance specialists out of a thousand scientists. So we need a real big push around finance. The next one. The whole food chain. Re rethinking how we do business models. Food loss and waste. Consumption issues. They are going to be crucial pieces. We cannot be constantly focusing on production. Next one. These, both the finance piece and the looking at the whole food chain and the value chains are very private sector approach. Farmers, of course, are also part of the private sector, but smallholder farmers can be disempowered by private sector. So we need to also think about how do we empower farm organizations to demand the services they need from governments, to be able to negotiate great prices from the private sector? So there has to be a whole area of empowerment for farm organizations, gender, youth. Also consumer organizations demanding the food that's good for healthy diets. The next theme. So one of the challenges is there's 700, or well, they're going to be by 2030, 700 million smallholder farms, essentially. How are we going to ever achieve that scale? And Alistair's already mentioned that in some parts of the world, there's only 11 growing seasons to trial new ways of doing things. If we're serious, we have to get to 700 million within a decade. And we think it's going to be this place. And so when we talk about policy change, what's the most important policy to focus on? Is it only in the agricultural sector, or should we also be thinking about rural services, how to get rural services functioning, how to get cell phones into the hands of almost every farmer in the world? The next one. And none of what I've said is going to work without this one. Policy and institutional change. We have to have an incentive system which makes business work, which connects farmers, smallholder farmers, to the business sector, which gets the digital services working, the extension services working. This is fundamental to it all. If this is not working in a particular country, we're doing humanitarian work. We're not doing agricultural development. Next one. And of course, all of these have to come together in a particular geography. And there's probably other ones which we will hear during the course of the week. So the six themes are, are going to be led by all different agencies this week. We're pushing them to try and be very outcome oriented, to have something very practical by the end of the week. And the last one. I should just say before the last one comes up, we have two Campbells in the audience, and we're not brothers, and we're not cousins, and we're not distant relatives. We probably have a relative back from the 15th century in Scotland, and that's about all. <laughs> I, I, I grew up in South Africa, in the apartheid South Africa, and Zimbabwe became independent in 1980, and that's when I moved to Zimbabwe. And it was an extremely exciting time in the, the 1980s. Education went like this. Health services went like this. Agriculture went like this. The smallholder farmers producing maize had been linked into the markets and were producing maize six to seven tons per hectare. They, they were providing the maize for the, the national security because there was also a very large-scale sector in Zimbabwe, but the small-scale farmers were doing fantastically well. And when you were in a village, you always started with a very revolutionary song. This is forward with a revolution, which was the drive to get independence, and then after independence, it was forward with the farmers, forward with health, forward with education. So now, to start the work, this work this week, I want you to stand up or to sit down, but to follow my instructions. So, are we ready? Pamberi net transformation!
Pamberi ne climate advisories. Pamberi ne climate finance. Pamberi ne pharma. Dr. Bruce. Oh, not yet. <laughs> so the next part is one of the things that we really have to transform as well is the way we do partnerships. We all talk about partnerships all the time, but I do not believe we're at this point. We have to get to this point in partnerships as well, and that's the next exercise. So I hand you back to the host.